Hey everyone, it's RCK, and I'm glad to have you here again for our next episode. Today we're going to be going over turn 75 and 76 for our Fallen Empire series. I know it's been a little bit, but I think I checked, that was about nine days. I was like, man, I need to do a video tonight. Been really, really busy with my life lately. I started teaching fifth grade this week. Um, other than that, I did get some new fish for my 60 gallon. Uh, my fiance had a birthday. Uh, we'll be moving soon. Got into closing the house the other day, uh, like two or three days ago. Um, been busy with my turns. Been grading papers. My ferret got sick, and that's about it. So uh, yeah, I've been really, really busy these last couple of days. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in and get these these two turns checked out. So we see two battles here between Manchaka and Arakosafali. So we do see that they are continuing with their war. Um, just as a quick look here. Oh, so we do see Machaka losing a King of Flames. Very unfortunate for him. Um, these are 50 gem mages that he had to summon. So already that is a pretty big loss for him. Regardless of the rest of this. Um, two sorcerers, yeah, I mean, 200 gold apiece. But it's really that King of Flames, which is a big loss for him here. Um, of course, we see... Arco still using the Titan of Growth in this battle here. Much smaller force than what we normally see the Titan with. Um, but it seemed to have been used very efficiently. And let's see, let's watch, just to be sure, let's see how he died. He died of like foul vapors or something. Oh, yeah, there is foul vapors. Never mind. More than likely, that's my, kind of what I thought. Um, seeing a force this small, I saw the Arcosophali Mage, where is it at? This one right here, that had great Foul Vapors paths. This is a huge amount of gems. Usually I would not recommend putting this many gems on a unit here. Uh, more than likely this unit was moved over, and these are gems for the entire army. Um, that's a pretty good assumption there. Um, but still, I would like those moved over on a scout separate or any other flying unit that you could. We do not see any poison resistance. Uh, Serpent's Blessing did not come up here from Machaka in this battle, even though it could have. We do not see it. Lots of gear here on this King of Flames as well. Very expensive loss here from Machaka between gear and the summon himself. Uh, fly, Firestorm has been uh, put up by Machaka. And honestly, okay, so his units do have Fire Resistance 5, which isn't too bad. But you see Fire Resistance 5 from the Hoplite, so Akras of Folly also has Fire Resistance up, but also has Serpent's Blessing up. Uh, looks like we do see some chaff here coming from Akras of Folly uh, to uh, slow these guys down. Lots of Gifts of Heaven really hurting these uh, groups of hoplites here, the Machak and hoplites, if they hit this square, they're hitting all four. These ivy ogres are not, lag or vine ogres, I don't say that. Vine ogres, not ivy ogres, are not really lasting much time at all. They're just a summon chaff unit, lions. Uh, I mean, they are ethereal, so they'll take a little bit longer to take out by the chaff. They do have pierce and slash resistance. Ooh, I didn't know these Spartes here had a actual magic weapon on this summon here. So this is just a battlefield summon. I think it costs you one earth gem and it gives you a group of these guys. I did not know they had a magical weapon. Makes them better. Oh, we just took out some of our own guys there. Arco, nice. So it looks like King of Flames needs either died or ran away. More than likely died because it did so. It's dead in the report. And there we go. That's what happened there. So we did otherwise see a lot of raids back and forth from in. And we're just going to click through those pretty fast. Uh, just back and forth, back and forth. Spectres equipped up. We did check those out last turn. Uh, uh, this is a summon from end he's using. Raids from Ermor. Green Knight from end. Spectres from Ermor. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Here we see a white mage being used by Machaka. So let's go ahead and check out what that white mage has on it. 
So they have a lucky coin, giving them luck and a pretty decent shield. A firebrand, a dragon helmet is going to be giving them morale and dark vision, but it is undead. So I believe this unit has a hunt. Okay, it's a spirit sight. Okay, so 100%. Anyway, oh, the firebrand also gives morale and fire resistance. I forgot about that. Armor of Knights, just a very, very decent armor to put on your unit. Boots of Quickness, of course, gives them quickness. Living Water is why you see the Elemental right there. And then Amulet of Anti-Magic is just giving plus 4 magical resistance, giving you a nice 21. Uh, pretty good overall. Uh, so you're doing lots of damage. That Firebrand is also going to be having a AoE attack whenever it hits. So, this should be pretty good to take out any PD along with the paths that it has here. We already see it casting a personal regen, so I already knew that it had double nature. But, death one, fi earth one, fire one, those are great thug paths along with two nature. This is, this is great. Um, pretty good chassis, size four. You can enlarge it to size five. There's a good chance, unless it's a size six trampler, that this won't be trampled. Uh, pretty high protection that hasn't even gone through its natural protection buffs yet. You also have things like uh, tempered flesh and whatnot. Uh, you can do like a phoenix pyre. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of good buffs you can have here for your script on a white mage that has all these paths on them. Very, very nice. Uh, if I had one more death, you'd be more likely to do things like soul vortex and the vulnerability. Uh, but one death is kind of low, so he might not be doing things like that. Elemental Fortitude is good, though. Okay, so, of course, he's able to take out that little bit of PD. We have a raid from Ermor, a raid from End, a raid from Ermor. Who won it? Ermor attacked in and won. Okay, so Ermor did win that one. Uh, we have a battle from Arcosophali attacking Abyssi. Of course, this is one of their larger armies, bringing 230 hoplites to bear. With 40 heart champions, these are their cap only sacreds. 18 mystics as well, so this has got a pretty decent mage core in it too, guys. This is one that's going to be taken forts. So we need to watch out for that one, so let's see. Okay, that one was on the throne, that one stormed the throne. So, Arcus Folly now has the throne of the first age, bringing Dominion 3, increases magic. And blessed troops get magical resistance plus one. Very nice. That's not important. So um, Arcus Folly gets attacked here by independence and provinces taken from them. So very interesting. So we see Ermor taking a lot of the Satis land here. Uh, very dangerous for Anne just because of the fact that more than likely Satis has already... Uh, search a lot of death around here, even though we don't see it here. I mean, we see a well of pestilence here. We see a lot of gems here for him. I think most of the death was death sites were kind of around here. If I remember, I don't remember. So uh, yeah, very interesting to see Ermor pushing that far in. Um, but yeah, that I mean, he's able to trace income all the way back. So this is a huge amount of income for Ermor at the moment because I'm sure he was down to zero. Basically, and now he's he's up two or three hundred from these provinces at least. Um, being on man itself, giving him 73. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely helping him out a lot, helping him build forts, temples, labs, anything that he wants, priests, everything. He is definitely uh, pushing in back at this point since End isn't able to push their dominion into him. Sure, they still hold purgatory. Yes, and holds every global but Mother Oak. So very interesting. Keep that in mind. That is, I mean, he is at a pretty good point in the game here. Yes, he is fighting Ermor, which is unfortunate for him, but he does hold four out of the five globals, so that does give him a pretty good boost there to his power for sure. So that was turn 75, so let's head over to turn 76. I don't feel like we need to continue on talking about that too much. Okay, so we actually only see battles here from Ermor and Inn. Of course, they are still duking it out, but we definitely see more raids from End this time than Ermor. 
So we have Ermore losing a raid against End. We have End winning a raid. I'm sure just a very light thug he's using here. Because they do have homesickness, so they won't take oh yeah. They won't take very long at all before they they die if they don't get back home. Uh, just a vine shield. I mean a decent thug, otherwise it's astral too. Very cool, very cool. Body ethereal, yeah, they're gonna have some very nice buffs for him. Another one, I do like the way he's thugging these. I'm using them in the vicinity of Ashdod, uh, just so he will be able to, or any, I, th I think, this I have to look. I think the um, Waste give these guys, but I know I know he definitely gets them from Ashdod itself, the cap, because it's a Waste. Another raid one here. And we're starting to see Fiends of Darkness from in, so we know he's summoning demons. So that's pretty interesting. They're pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so we'll keep going. We see the Green Knight raiding again. Of course, the Green Knight is immortal. Uh, so regardless if he loses it or not, he'll get it back in three turns. Regeneration, Glamour, Recuperation, Strength of Spring. Decent attacks here without any weapons. Pretty good protection without anything. Three miscellaneous slots because he doesn't have a foot slot. A very, very nice unit to thug there. Another thug here. Raiding that was summoned from in. Another raid. Taking out a priest. I mean, that did cost Ermor money, so that is important. Uh, we see a raid from Ermor actually bringing Lot here. Uh, 17 knights with 17 sacreds along with 6 priests and 2 censors. So, I mean, these did cost him 60 gold apiece. That's pretty, that's pretty important. Um, so this where it was, this province was taken by Ermor. We see, we got a good item there. We got a skull face. That's pretty nice. Um, we see the independence attacking end as well, taking another province from them. Strange birds attacking end, but at this point here, he does have forces inside of the province itself along with a decent amount of pd so those birds were no match for him and that is all for that turn we're going to look at the state of the game then we're going to look through the uh, score graph since this turn went pretty fast and that will be it for turn 75 and 76 guys so like i said before we have ermor is stretching far and wide across um, man's territories here all the way to Satis's territory. Satis is still in the game, don't forget. Um, just no one has taken him out yet. Surprise, he's just letting people take this back or take this all here without like r sending raiding parties out back and forth, back and forth. It'll at least kind of negate some of that income that they're getting. He does have another fort here at three as well. The end is sieging. Very interesting to see there. We see in losing lots of territories and man, this is the opposite side, of course. Uh, but otherwise, still in a pretty good standing. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to hold on. I mean, yes, he still had man itself. But, I mean, he's lost majority of the territories around it. So, that's very unfortunate. Um, and I feel that... Okay, well, the, the Dominion itself in uh, man here is in dominion so that is very nice now the surrounding dominion is definitely not his yeah the surrounding is ermors or there's not really any at all this is this that's ends and that's satisses yeah so have to be careful with that but uh we might see ermor go for man again or actually try to take it this time. And of course we've seen raids back and forth here all game. As far as Machaka goes. We see two forces here standing off here between this throne that Machaka holds. Other than that we do see him uh, kind of gathering a force here. More than likely to continue either raiding or taking forts from Abyssia. Here at 89. We see a large Arcosophile force at 41. That was a fort that he just took uh, from Machaka. We see Machaka starting to raid some of, uh, well, actually sitting on Scalaria. So this is a pretty uh, expensive province for Arco to lose, being a cap. 
being worth a few gems. Uh, so yeah, he might want to keep that or might want to fight for that. The fort is broken, so we will be seeing him storm it next turn. Otherwise, not too much going on between those two. So Tiss, of course, sitting in his cap at this point. As far as the Bizia goes, yes, they have essentially sent everything to their cap. Of course, we still see militias and other units around here. Um, probably having, uh, yeah, definitely blood hunting. 416, they are definitely blood hunting. Um, trying to get probably as many blood slaves as possible to have as many summons as they can to put up a last stitch effort um, in order to try to not lose the game. And that, uh, that's everything I have, guys, for these two turns. Oh, actually, the province that was taken from Arcosafali was actually a throne. So that is very, very interesting to see. I'm glad I noticed that. I was like, why is that independent? I knew Arcosafali had that. So, I did not notice that. Very interesting. So let's look at the throne points here. Arcosafali has the level 3. Just a level 3, and then I assume one of the level 2s, because that was theirs at one point. I saw it in total they had 5. Machaka has the Throne of Death, Throne of the Moon, Throne of the Earth, and the Golden Throne, giving him a total of 8 points. We have the Throne of the Gaia, and the Outer Throne being controlled by End, giving them a total of 4. Uh, this could be another one of Arcosophales. Um, due to the fact of one of those one of those thrones were stormed not too long ago, so uh, yeah, those are I I believe between one one of them that we know is Arcosophali since it was raided from him by Independence, and I think yeah it was Throne of First Age that he took, and what is this one Throne of Bureaucracy? Yep. So both are both of the two that are missing are under Arco's control, so he's actually sitting at seven. Uh, in second place for throne points there. Just one behind Machaka. We have the Hall of Fame. Not too interesting. Score graphs. Of course, we see... Is this Arco in front? Yep, Arco in front. We see this huge, huge loss here from End just because of how much he raided all of a sudden from all those other people. And now we see a huge gain from Ermor... It's just running through his territory. As far as who's on top with forts, it is Arco Sofali, followed by Machaka. Income. Machaka on top for income here, which they've been on top for majority of the game. And then we see Arco Sofali in second, followed by End in third place. But gym income wise. I mean, huge, huge spike here from in from all those provinces. A big loss, and he's starting to recover a little bit. But still in first place for gym income. But you see this huge gain here from Ermor. This is pretty, pretty nice for Ermor here to be gaining all of these gems every turn, regardless if he's alchemizing, regardless if they're death gems or any other type of gem. Having gems is still nice. You can still trade. Lots of things you can do with that. Putting him in fourth place for gems at the moment. That is very, very nice. We see Machaka in second, Arco in third. As far as research goes, we do see Machaka holding first place and more than likely going to be researching all level nines before anyone else. But we do see over the last two or three turns that we have End actually overtaking Arco Safali in research. This is pretty, pretty interesting here. Very nice, very nice. Um, so Arcos Folly hasn't, or in the, of course earlier, uh, Arcos Folly normally had the lead over everyone else they were fighting, but now, um, about halfway through the game, Machaka overtook them, and now End is overtaking them. So that is very interesting to see. Dominion's not as important, but we do see it being End, Machaka, and then Arco followed by Abyssia, Ermor, and Satis. We have our armies. Of course, Ermor will always have the highest army unless Galeria is in the game. And they are both left alive. <laughs> uh, followed by... Who is that? Is that Satis? No, that's Satis at the bottom. Followed by Machaka. And Abyssia. Arcosophali. And lastly, we do have Satis there at the bottom. 
but of course we have our ascension points. Uh, and that's it. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.